Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a bunch of results over the past weekend. We had the Road to Davanga side 3 on 3 tournament held in Malaysia. We had uh, the Bushiro China League as well as a VGCS that happened in Japan. So just going to go through all the results. It's pretty interesting to see what um, I guess decks people are starting to bring as the set 1 Divine's meta evolves and just kind of seeing what is the most dominant in the meta game at the moment. If you guys need any coaching, my meta file link is in the bottom right hand corner. Feel free to book a session and we can get started on your Spring Fest season. If you guys haven't already, click that subscribe button for all notifications on this channel. If you guys have been paying attention uh, to I guess the topping stuff over the last weekend, there's actually been a pretty big shift and this pie chart kind of explains it in its entirety. So big shout out to Fuzzy if you guys haven't um, checked out his website. This is probably the best repository for pretty much anything Vanguard, deck lists, uh, ratings for players, tournaments that happen all around the world. This is the spot, the hub spot. Um, I'll put the link in the description for VG Paradox as well. But yes, a lot of teams are starting to bring Luard and to be honest, I think Luard has been kind of slept on for a while and I think now that people are kind of gearing towards all the Divines stuff, Luard actually becomes better with Les Shurunui around. And not only that, I think Luard is just very very strong in general because of the promo outweighing how good it is into something like Shenry. So, the winning team brought Shunui, Luard, and Varga. So Varga finally got its, you know, first pretty big result. Uh, second team brought Youthberg, Luard, and Prism. And then the third team brought Wellstra, Shunui, and Luard. And the fact that all three teams brought Luard, that says a lot. So just going to go through um, the deck list here. So we do have the Shunui. This one is very very aligned with i guess how i would build shunui and esperida speaks for itself um with a meta where a lot of uh i guess teams or decks playing bracing angel ladder you need a way to be able to generate multi-attack and only esperida is able to kind of do that right your grade twos have to make sure that you dominate and if you don't because your opponent uses bracing angel ladder you just get screwed right you're versing Prism as well. If they're going first and they clear their board and you get first stride, you can't revive anything. So that is really, really annoying. So you need a way to be able to play, right? First stride, second stride, and that's pretty much how you amp up throughout the game, right? But otherwise, everything is kind of normal playing three of the Stealth Dragon Shurunui. Uh, this is probably because you're able to find um, more stealth units off the top five with Shoujo Doji. Additionally, if you find, you know, plus ones um, off this guy, you're obviously able to search him. Um, not playing the dragon because you're already playing a lot of cards that are not stealth. So Esperadia, the new cycle card. Um, so yeah, you just need to be able to balance out the amount of stealth units in your deck. Still playing the two Obero uh, for Persona Stride. And then, you know, cutting down the uh, Seike for compensation with Esperadia, which is completely fine. Um, otherwise, everything else is just kind of the same. Only playing three is Asuo, um, because this card actually is only beneficial on the grade two. And if you're playing grade two game, but especially in a meta where a lot of people are now reverting to set one decks, there is less of a need to play the grade two game. So cutting down that to three is completely fine. Um, otherwise, everything else is kind of normal, Bracing Angel, Ladder, and Strides. So yeah, that's pretty much Shunui in its entirety, and I think it's a very, very strong list. Um, obviously, we don't have Shinri at the moment, but yeah, we can find, um, I guess, replacements for that. Then looking at the Luard list, so Luard is very much played. So playing two of the normal Luard to be able to stride into Drag Driver, playing three of the... I call it the the draw one this I think is really good in a deck that wants to just go through its deck and try to compress try to get out stuff really quick so if you're playing this that means that you know you're digging through your deck you have I guess a card that is ritual that you can call off your um, 
drag driver, um, as well as your Morphessa, just having a huge bait stick, 28k is very, very annoying for your opponent to guard. Um, you're playing two during to be able to find your Luad clone from the drop zone to be able to Persona Stride. You're also playing Biscotti, being able to check top is really good for Energy Blast 3, um, but also, you know, just having Energy Blast 3 to draw a card when you're guarding with it or CB1 is just really, really good. Um, otherwise, everything else is kind of um, as it is. Like I said, the Doggo promo is actually very, very strong in comparison to Shenry because Shenry can actually be played around, whereas this can't. So what I mean by that is Shenry needs your opponent, I think it's like less rear guards or one rear guard um, or something like that. Whereas the Doggo just needs you being more rear guards than your opponent or you play in order, right? And the fact that you're playing this and you're always flooding your board for a grade two game, like you're always gonna get the plus 5K. And it's the plus 5K that really, really matters because then you're hitting, you know, over defensive triggers in the early game. It's just really strong. Being able to sack, draw two and just thin through your deck uh, just makes, you know, Luard all the much scarier when it's checking a bunch of triggers. Um, otherwise, everything else is just kind of the same. You're playing your Brazing Angel Ladder. Uh, this deck playing three draws, one blue OT. Pretty normal, like every other Luard deck. Then looking at Varga. So Varga is obviously one of the big decks coming out of set one. Uh, this deck is pretty straightforward. Uh, this deck plays the non-retire grade 3 in the front row as long as it's unique. Um, 4 of the grade 2 that uh, essentially bounces to hand 4 cycle card to boulder axe. Uh, this one plays 4 of the grade 2 cycle card and I think that's pretty greedy. Um, especially because it becomes a dead card later on. Uh, Persona right to CB1 and retire a column is just not valuable. But I guess if you're playing against a meta with full of Luards, you can kind of get rid of like the intercept, but I think it's just still very, very lackluster, so to say. Um, and then you play four of the Lightning Dragon Dude, which essentially becomes a 13k or well, 15k booster. Um, and yeah, being able to sack itself and then obviously the restand sack as well. You play one cat to be able to just, you know, get extra shield. You're also playing one of the Blitz Order that essentially. You know, if you're playing a card on the Guardian Circle that's not a Sentinel, you can give it plus 10 and then bounce it back to hand, right? Um, but otherwise, you know, everything else is pretty straightforward. Uh, choosing the Regalus piece as Bracing Angel Ladder in comparison to Chalice is pretty interesting. Um, I think Chalice, a lot of people are playing because they just value the Persona Ride. Being able to Persona Ride in a restanding Vanguard deck is just too valuable and they don't really care too much about the plus 10. Maybe it's because, you know, a lot of cards in this deck, you know, kind of refund itself. Um, so Chalice is viable to play anyways. So yeah, that's that. And then just looking at some of the other decks as well. So Prism was one of the decks that I guess placed in the top three teams. This one plays the new Cycler card um, that came out in set one. But otherwise, everything else is just kind of the same as your traditional Prism list. You know, you're playing four late. Uh, for Celtic, uh, playing 2-cat, uh, your 4 Prism Searches. Uh, this deck only runs 2 Aura, um, and then playing 1 Sweet X Sweet, 1 of the Symphony 20k Shield, and then playing this order, essentially it is CB1 to play this card, give your Vanguard the skill, all your Rearguards gain plus 5. So it bumps up the numbers and not opting to play any of the Regalus pieces um, in this deck at all. So yeah, very interesting Prism list, so to say. Um, and that might just be something that, you know, Prism just kind of has to do to amp up the power level on this deck to compete against all the other decks as well. So that's Prism. Then we look at this Welstra deck. So Welstra is kind of... This deck that used to be like determined as one of the bigger decks in set one, uh, but obviously, you know, Varga took the spotlight, uh, playing the new Rad Line for Wellstra, and opting to only play 4 4 of each of the Freya and the new Grade 2, no Operator Girl that allows you to draw one. You're playing three of the robot, four Bowamine for, or Bowamine for uh, counter charging purposes, one Bracing Angel Light, and then pretty much um, all the other. Um, what you can what you call it products uh, to be able to you know cycle through playing two cat to be able to you know live up with the 
shield and you know it's just a really really good card in general for all applications and then yeah playing four draw uh seven crit obviously stable to run four of the intersoul crit in case you need the soul at any point so yeah very cool list um and i think there is another um whilst your list later on but we'll cover that as we go so jumping to the Bushra china league and again dominant with Luard and to be expected this is a singles format event uh, with one Welstra, one Youthberg, Shurinui and a Jet. So just looking at I guess the Luard deck, this one is a little bit hard to kind of figure out. I think that heal there is a grade heal um, which is pretty you know like what's the word like it's anticipated, right? Because you're playing into a meta where a lot of people are opting to play uh, Luard. And I think, you know, playing great heals is good, especially if you're playing singles format and it's more consolidated with grade four decks, right? Uh, you, there's like one cat there. Uh, pretty much everything else is kind of the same. This deck runs the one maple, whereas the previous deck didn't, I don't think. So this one here, this one here didn't play the cat so i think the placing of this player didn't really matter too much about the shirinui um and even shirinui just doesn't bomb the board anyway so you just flood your board and then you'll always get something to retire anyways um so that's that so this one played the one maple um there's some painkillers there there's a kybra and i think that's a cycle card if i'm not mistaken so yeah the most important card obviously the dogger promo um so yeah it's just how it is, right? And I think Luard is just a, in a really good position the moment it gets its promo because it just outweighs um, a lot of other decks and just plays a better grade two game into a deck like Shurinui and Shurinui just can't compete. So yeah, that's that. And then just looking at the Wellstra list, we have another one again playing the 4-4 the four four of the two product activators um, and then four of the cycle card, which the other deck didn't run. This deck doesn't run the robot but only playing four of the bubble mine. Um, and then I think the product line is the same. So yeah, two of the beam, two of the fortress, um, four of the draw one, and I'm playing Bracing Angel Ladder as well. Uh, this one only runs one cat, which is, yeah, pretty interesting. Uh, this one also runs, is that a draw? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the draw, right? Or is that a front? No, that's definitely a draw because that's four crits, eight crits, four here. I'm pretty sure that's draw. But yeah, very, very cool list. Uh, a different adaptation to the Welsh list. Then we have a VGCS in Sapporo. So the Iwamizawa VGCS, the 10th um, of the VGCS. So this is teams and the first team was Varga, Chris Rain and Rezael really embracing the set one metagame. Um, and obviously the release of set one. Second team was Prism, Prism and Razel. Third was Tegria, Musha King and Shunui. And then fourth was Razel, Zorga and Avantgarde. A very weird lineup there. But this one saw no Luards, which is pretty wild to me. Um, but pretty dominant with uh, Razel and a, a bunch of other decks as well. So just gonna go through um, the Varga list here. This one is running the Shihab. So essentially it's a 6k which says um, if you wish to use, if you wish to ride from ride deck you can put this card into soul instead of ditching a card. Um, and then I think it gains like plus 5k on rearguard or something like that. Um, but yeah, it, it's just a really good card to be able to just play in the early game. Oh yeah, it's like on place to rearguard gains plus 5. So it's an 11k grade 1. Um, can just bash, doesn't really matter. Attack Vanguard, puts into Soul and Rewrite. So yeah, just a, a really good applicable card, especially when, if you want to clear your board in the early game against Shirinui. Um, so again, like this deck opts to play Chalice and pretty much everything else is just like the same as every other Vargo deck. The most interesting one, to be honest, is this Chris Rain deck. So. Chris Rain and Red Line as expected, and then you play this uh, grade two. So essentially when it's placed on rearguard, if you have a grade three or greater Chris Rain Vanguard, 
Count Boss 1, Energy Blast 3. Top 5, search for a card that is different name from uh, any units you have on your Vanguard or Rearguard Circle and call it out and shuffle your deck. When this unit attacks, if you have a Grade 3 Chris Rain, I think. No, if you... I think it's... Yeah, so when this unit attacks a Grade 3 or greater, if you have 4 units with different names, or 4 or more units with different names, uh, against plus 10. So immediately a 20k beater, 30k on Persona Ride, very very solid, solid card, and just being able to search top 5 for a card is just really strong. Um, Playing 4-4 of each of the cycle card, I think Voucher Blood in this deck is actually really good because you are able to just find stuff off the top deck and not really have to worry about, you know, um, not finding this card um, in conjunction with obviously the new cycle card, of course. And then this grade one is pretty interesting. Um, so one of the new double R's that came out from the new set. So when it boosts a grade 3, or if you have a grade 3 or greater Chris Rain Vanguard uh, against plus 5, so 13k booster on Vanguard or Rearguard. Uh, and then also on Rearguard, if it boosts a grade 3 or greater Chris Rain Vanguard, if you have 4 or more cards or 4 or more units with different card names, uh, you can en energy blast 3 until the end of battle when your opponent would call cards without Sentinel. Uh, to Guardian Circle, they must call three or more cards with different grades at the same time. So this applies for the Vanguard attack, and the Vanguard attack is actually filthy fat, right? Like, uh, Chris Rain just gains like a bunch of power, uh, gains like an extra crit if I'm not mistaken. Like, plus 15 is like 28, Persona Ride 38, uh, your energy charge 3 gains a crit, and then yeah, you just stack a bunch of triggers and Divine Skill and then you call a card that mimics the Vanguard's powers, which is really, really strong. You're playing full UE card to be able to bounce stuff. Uh, this is essentially a 13k attacker, uh, 10k shield, as long as you have a Chris Rain Vanguard, uh, 2 cat just to bump up shield. And then you're running a bunch of like different name triggers. And this is actually pretty important, especially if your hand is like not great because you can just slap down cards, uh, Yui Cup bounces it back, or Chris Rain, the Divine Skill, just bounces it all back. Um, and obviously having different named triggers is actually very, very important. Uh, the only trigger that you don't run is obviously the front because the front's value is just really good. Other than that, you're opting to play Chalice, you don't really care too much. Um, I think this deck just naturally gets big, right? So like your cycle card, like, draws like plus five um draws your card when you guard with it uh voucher blunt um gives you plus five so like the power level is insane this is a multi-attacker um which is also good in a deck where you know it's just chris rain and two rear guards um so being able to extend is good and then this card is just really good being able to just find cards you could just bounce it and just keep refunding the skill while well, reusing the skill it's just really strong um, so yeah, pretty interesting list for Chris Rain and you know taking it first place at this team tournament I'm actually pretty curious what the record was for this particular player and how many games they won and lost um, But yeah, one of the first Chris Rain results we've seen then looking at those Rezel list uh, So this one runs one of the guy that gains plus 15 when called by a Rezel ability um, playing four Biscotti uh, four Nobia and four of the Feyfelt um, just big attackers, which is what you want. Uh, so angle, just a really good promo. Um, plus 5k, applicable in pretty much every deck. 2 cat to be able to bump up shield. And a lot of Razel decks are now running the, uh, the Doggo order, Warrior's Rest. So essentially, Energy Blast 2 to play this card. Choose two of your units and they gain the following ability, Auto Vanguard Rearguard. Um, during the battle that this unit was boosted, uh, this unit gains plus 10. So essentially your boosters just pump up plus 10, right? And then if you have 5 or more units, uh, draw a card. So essentially it's a free power buff, and this deck previously ran the Regalia order, or the, the one that's like CB1, draw 2, call 2. Now you don't need that, um, and just being able to pump up power is just much much more beneficial, I think, for Rezao as a whole, just because of how well the deck pushes. Um, yeah, and I think it's just really stable as well, and always being able to just compress your deck, 
being able to have the chance to six damage heal on any of the triggers is just really really strong um so that's the Rezael list and then we look at this prison list um nothing too crazy but i guess pointing out like this grade three just amps up the defense on this deck being able to soul charge is also good as well for but i'll just find your seraph and then pretty much everything else kind of you know works in its favor so yeah um just wanted to show that because uh, i thought prison was pretty cool so yeah that's pretty much all the results we have this weekend um i'm expecting to see more results come the next couple of weeks i know that i think the first spring fest is happening i think next week or the week after so very you know keen to see what comes out of tri regulation and just kind of seeing you know how standard really is obviously we just got the release of shunui luard so just seeing how many of those decks will make it to the top tables for spring fest if you guys like this video pop a like comment down below what you guys think of all the results over this past weekend what did you guys like seeing what were some builds that were interesting let me know down in the comments if you guys haven't already click that subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next video peace